Hi, I'm Owen from the Aquarium Shed. You may remember me from such fish tube videos as The Levitating Moss Stone, The Green Valley Aquascape, or That Time I Ate Fish Food and Actually Enjoyed It. Mm, no? Not interested? You just want to hear me talk about a CO2 system? Yeah, fair enough. Hi everyone and welcome back. Now a little while ago I did a video about my DIY CO2 generator system. These kind of steel canisters of which there are a few versions these days. In that video I explain how to use these systems and most importantly how much CO2 is produced by them. If you haven't seen it yet you should check it out by clicking the link up uh, here. So engagement in that video has been awesome and there have been a bunch of really great comments including some great tips and some interesting questions. This week I decided to test a few things out and answer a few queries. First up, the best tip ever, using ice cubes instead of water. Now a number of you suggested this and it makes perfect sense. You see, in these cylinders the water activates the reaction by dissolving the citric acid and bicarb so that the two react. This makes setup a little tricky because as soon as you add water to the dry ingredients, it starts to fizz up quite quickly. Not only can this cause a mess, but you're also losing valuable CO2 until you're able to seal it up. So a few of you mentioned using ice instead of water, and as soon as I heard that, I could completely see why this would be such a great tip. Because the ice melts gradually, it takes a while for the reaction to start, but you also don't have to worry about quickly sealing everything or losing CO2. The first time I tried this, it was a little difficult because normal size ice cubes don't fit easily in the cylinder. But then I bought a rectangular ice mold for a couple of quid on eBay and it made everything a lot easier. I'll leave a link to these ice molds in the description. So I first tried this tip a few months ago and will certainly be continuing to fill the cylinder with ice in the future. It makes the process so much easier. You're not fumbling around trying to get a decent seal before you deplete ingredients and you have the time to do everything a bit more methodically. The only downside is that you have to wait longer to achieve the desired pressure for use. In my case, in a relatively cool basement, I found that it took almost 24 hours to fully pressurise, as opposed to a couple of hours with the water method. In a warmer environment, this time would definitely be reduced a little, I'm sure, but it's fair to say that using ice requires a bit more patience and you might lose a day of CO2 dosing for your aquarium. All in all, I think the pros outweigh the cons with this tip. Now a query that's been talked about a lot in the comments section is whether you could use this system with a sugar and yeast mix instead of with bicarb and citric acid. It sounds like a very reasonable assumption that this would work. So I decided to test this out. Obviously there's a few factors to consider. Usual sugar and yeast systems do not contain the reaction in any way and you don't shut them off at night. Also, the reaction works best at room temperature and lower temperatures will lead to a much slower reaction. Now this steel canister seems to be built almost like a thermos flask, so I was hopeful it might retain the temperature of water and help the reaction to start nice and quickly. But I think the reality is that the cylinder dissipates the heat and cools everything down quite quickly. So my initial experiment was with a litre of warm water, 150 grams of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of yeast. After about two days, the needle valve moved just above the yellow zone, but after another two days, it hadn't moved any further. In the end, I left the mix to react for a full week and no further pressure was developed in the system. When I finally gave up and opened the valve, there was a bit of a hiss, but it was very gentle. So I guess the reaction was working, but it was going to be quite a while before the system was usable. Since that experiment was quite a conservative attempt in terms of the amount of ingredients, I decided to step it up a little. For my second attempt, I tried 300 grams of sugar with two teaspoons of yeast and a litre of water. I decided not to adjust the quantity of water because I figured you've got to allow some space for CO2 to be stored as the system pressurised, and this system is only 2 litres anyway. Because I was concerned that the cool environment might also be negatively impacting the experiment, I also moved the canister upstairs and left it by a radiator to keep warm. This time the needle valve got to the top of the yellow zone after just one day, but then thereafter the same situation was true as before. The pressure never built up any further, and after a week I still did not have a usable system. So after two experiments I feel like I can pretty conclusively say that yeast and sugar are not viable reactants for this type of DIY CO2 system. Whilst they obviously do react to create CO2, that is just basic chemistry, there is something about this setup that stops it from being a usable system and creating the required pressure. 
My guess is that the cylinder creates too cool an environment and therefore the reaction is much slower than it would normally be in a plastic bottle. If you have any other thoughts as to why this did not work, let me know in the comment section below. Another top tip that I've discovered is that this system works just fine with a CO2 splitter. I've bought a freeway splitter on eBay and it's allowed me to use a steel CO2 canister on multiple tanks at the same time. When I say it out loud, this seems obvious, but I know a few people were wondering if there would be sufficient pressure or not to use a splitter. I can confirm that it worked just fine on free tanks, but obviously the CO2 depleted three times faster, so it's not the most practical of solutions. Another query that came up recently was whether this system was susceptible to CO2 dumping towards the end when the pressure reduces. This refers to an occasional problem experienced with traditional CO2 setups using a high pressure cylinder and a single stage regulator. Now I have no conclusive view on this because I am by no means an expert, but CO2 dumping is something I have never experienced with this system. My logic for why this might be is that the 20 kilograms per centimeter square pressure that this system creates is only equivalent to around 284 psi, whereas a high pressure CO2 cylinder typically has around 800 psi. The CO2 dumping happens towards the end when the single stage regulator is unable to regulate the fluctuating pressure. I think there is significantly less chance of this occurring when the maximum pressure the system has to regulate is so much lower. However, if you have any expertise in this regard, I'd really appreciate your thoughts on the matter. One final tip is about maintaining the system. If you already have one of these, you may have noticed that the reaction of citric acid and bicarbonate of soda will leave a crystallized sediment on the bottom of the cylinder. If left for several refills, the sediment can become really tough and it can damage the ceramic filter, so it is best to do a small amount of maintenance each time. Simply soaking the crystallized sediment in boiling water for five minutes is usually sufficient to break it down and then you just have to give it a quick swill to get rid. One word of warning though, the cylinder will heat up incredibly quickly when you add boiling water, so make sure you use some oven gloves when picking this system up. So there you go, a few key updates that I hope will be useful for those of you that have this system or are thinking of buying one. Ice cubes make life a lot easier. Do not bother trying sugar and yeast. Yes, you can use this on multiple tanks with a splitter. No, I don't believe CO2 dumping will occur. And remember to keep on top of maintenance to keep everything in good order. About maintaining the system. If you already have one of these, you may have noticed that the reaction of citric acid and but oh. That's annoying.